Hello guys. Today what I wanted to go ahead and do is teach you how to make your very first amigurumi. So this is a little dinosaur guy that I created. Rather than just teaching you how to make a ball, which is what most of the introductions to amigurumi will teach you. I thought it would just be fun to do something that is also very simple to make. Uh, it'll be your very first little Ami, and um, he has quite a bit of personality. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So what you're going to need is two contrasting colors, one for the body and his little feet, and then one for his little spine on the back. You're going to need scissors. I'm using a three and a half millimeter, which is also a size E if you're in the US, a crochet hook here, a stitch marker or a little piece of scrap yarn, a yarn needle, an embroidery needle with some embroidery floss in black. And then I'm using five millimeter safety eyes. You could use bigger if you'd like or smaller, whatever you have handy. Um, but he is rather small in size and so that's why I decided to go with the five millimeter. And then lastly, you're gonna need a little bit of stuffing to make him nice and round and plump. All right, that's it. Go ahead and get your materials and I will see you back when we're ready to crochet. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to get started. And in order to get started, what we do is a magic ring. Now, I like to do what's called a double magic ring because I think it actually makes the stitching in the center even tighter than our standard magic ring. So I'm gonna show you how to do the double magic ring. So what you do is you gotta keep your tension, okay? So I usually hold the working yarn in my back two fingers here. Then I'm going to make a pistol shape and I'm gonna go back around my fingers once, twice, and then a third time grasping the end here with my thumb, okay? Now looking from the top, I'm gonna to go under the first two, over the third, and pull that third one through here. Now that's gonna create a little bit of an A shape. Okay, so while holding that with your hook, you're gonna grab the, the ring here that you've made, so you can slip your finger out, okay? So you're holding the ring, both of the loops, with your two fingers on either hand. You've still got your tension in the back here, okay? And you've still got this on your hook. Now what you're gonna do is, using your back fingers to hold that tension, you're gonna yarn over from the back, okay? And you're gonna pull through. Now that's just creating basically a slip stitch in order to hold these rings together. So see, now I can move my hands away and it's not taking it out. It's not coming apart or anything like that. To get this little guy started, we're gonna do six single crochets in a magic ring or in a double magic ring in this case. All right, so we need to work into the center circle here and then we're gonna go in, yarning over in the back, pulling forward. Now you should have two loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over again and pull through those two loops. That's a single crochet, and that's crocheting into that magic ring here. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Go into the center, yarn over from the back, pull forward, that gives you two loops, yarn over from the back again, and pull through again, okay? That's two single crochets. And you'll notice on the top here that you've got a little braid that's forming, okay? So it looks kinda of like a little V shape, right? So you can count, if you ever lose your count, you can count the braids in order to know how many stitches are in your row. So there's one and two right now. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna go into the center again, yarning over from the back, pull forward a loop, yarn over again, and pull through the loop, okay? And then you saw there that it was trying to split the stitch, so we wanna make sure that doesn't happen because each piece of yarn actually has multiple threads. Right? So if it's a three ply, it's gonna have three threads in there. So now we've done one, two, three, let's keep going. So going in, yarning over in the back, pulling forward a loop, yarn over and pull through. Going in, yarning over in the back, pull forward, that's two loops, yarn over and pull through. There you go, one, two, three, four, and five. One more, going in, yarning over, pull forward, yarn over and pull through. 
All right, that's six single crochets into that magic ring or double magic ring in this case again. So now in order to make it a round circle and get rid of these loops, we're gonna gently start pulling this tail. And as you pull, you'll notice one of the two loops is starting to go in. In my case, it's this one. Then I'm gonna grab that and pull that first, okay? What that's doing is pulling the other loop in. It's gonna pull the other loop tight first, okay? And now I'm gonna grab that end again and I'm gonna pull that to get that last loop in. And as you can see, it's created a ring and it's nice and tight in the center. Because it's got two loops in there instead of just the one, it's gonna make it so that over time it's not going to loosen and create a, a little gap in that center, which can happen in just the standard magic ring. Okay, now we're gonna grab our little stitch marker and we're going to slip it onto that loop that's on our hook, okay? Now, when you're continuing on, you have two choices with this tail here. You can start to crochet around it, and that just fastens it more into your piece, or you can tuck it to the back, and then you can just clip it away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crochet around it for just a few stitches before I tuck it into the back. All right, so. The next row, so this is now row two or round two, because we're stitching in the round here, is going to be to increase all the way around. So we're doing two single crochets into each of these six stitches. So we should end up with 12 stitches at the end of this round. Okay, so let's go under the braid. You're going under that V, okay? You might need to use your nail here to pull it over your hook, but you'll see I've gone under the braid so I have my loop, the braid, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I'm not using this tail, I'm gonna lay that over the top of the braid. I've got my working yarn back here, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pull forward, there's my two on my hook. Now I'm gonna yarn over again and pull through those loops. So now I've single crocheted and I'm crocheting over that tail, right? So we're gonna go into that same stitch underneath that V, yarning over, pull forward, yarn over and pull through. That is one increase. So we've just done two single crochets into one stitch from the prior round, okay? So we are making this bigger in essence. So let's go ahead and move to the next stitch. We're gonna do two single crochets in that one because we're increasing. So we're gonna pull that through. There's one going into the same stitch, yarning over in the back, pull forward, yarn over, pull through. Okay, there's another increase going into the next one, yarning over in the back, pulling forward, yarn over again, pull through. Do that again into that same stitch. Okay, there's another increase. Now we've done three increases is giving us six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and then you count the one that your stitch marker is on as six. Okay, going into the next one, we're gonna continue on doing two single crochets into each of the prior round's stitches, okay? That is increasing around. You'll notice that in patterns, people say it different ways, okay? So it could be two single crochets in the next, or it could be increase in the next, it means the same exact thing. All right, so we've finished increasing around. You should have 12 stitches now on the outside of your piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and again, this one counts as twelve. Now we're going to move our stitch marker from this round to our new round here, because we're going to go ahead and start round three. Okay, and you can tuck that tail to the back. It's now really secure in there, so once you've built it around, you can just clip this away. You don't need it. It's already fastened in and everything, so it's good to go. Okay, so for round three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the pattern single crochet and then an increase, single crochet and then an increase and do that all the way around, okay? So at the end of this round, you're gonna have six more stitches. So we'll end up with 18 stitches at the end of this round. All right, so first we're single crocheting in the next. So we're going under that braid, okay? Now we're going into the next stitch to do an increase. So we're gonna do two in that next stitch there. Okay, now we're starting the pattern again. We're gonna go into the next one and do just a single crochet. Okay, now we're going into the next and doing an increase. So two in that next one, there we go. 
Now we're going into the next and just doing a single. And then we're going to go into the next and do an increase. And we're doing this all the way around, following that same pattern, so that we can build up our, our rows here, build up our rounds here. And so far, we're just making the piece flat, okay? So we're increasing evenly, and by increasing evenly, it's not really taking shape, it's staying flat at this point, okay? But we're gonna be changing that here in just a second. Okay, here's the last increase. And you can always double check again, counting your stitches on the outside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and that counts as 18. Okay, perfect. It's always good to double check because sometimes you'll have missed one and you won't be on the right count. You'll find out later on that that's the case and then you might have to frog some of it. So better to just do the count when you're at the end of each round if you're not sure. Okay, so I'm gonna take the stitch marker out, place it on my new working loop here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this tail away now that We've done another row. Oops. There we go. Okay, we're going to increase again. Uh, so we're still building it up. This is going to be the last one for now that we're going to build up, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do single crochet in the next two stitches, and then we're going to do an increase, okay? So it's going to be one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around. So we're single crocheting in the next, and then we're single crocheting in the next, and then we're increasing in the next. Okay, so two in the one, right? Now we're gonna do a single crochet, single crochet, and then an increase. So two in the next. Okay, single, single, and an increase. So at the end of this round, we're gonna have an additional six stitches, right? So we had 18, now we're gonna have 24 at the end of the round. So again, this is, we are increasing evenly, right? So every round we're increasing by six stitches. So it's making it even, it's making a flat piece so far. So we're not building it well, we're not building it up yet to make it a sh have a shape. We're just creating that flat top part of his head. Okay, I've got one more set here. So single, single, and then double on that last one. So an increase rather. Okay, there we go. All right, so we finished that. Now we're gonna go ahead and move our stitch marker again. All right, and then to count rows or rounds, you can see your center magic ring there. That's one, then this is two, three, and four. So we've done four rounds, now we're on to round five. Round five, we're just single crocheting around, okay? So now, because we're not increasing, we're gonna be starting to give it a, some shape here. It's gonna start building downward, right? Okay, so it's gonna make that kind of bowl shape. So this is nice and easy. You're just putting one single crochet into each of the prior stitches of the prior round. So at the end of this round, you're gonna end up with 24 stitches just like you did in the last one, okay? So we're maintaining the same stitch count for this round by single crocheting all the way around. Okay, so we finished that round. You'll see that it's starting to curl downward, right? So see it's starting to kind of give it a bowl shape instead of just being a flat piece. So now we're gonna move our stitch marker and now we need to start round six. So round six we're gonna be increasing again because he's not fully shaped yet. He's not as big as he's gonna be. Otherwise we would have just kept single crocheting but we're not, we're gonna build him a little bit bigger. So for this one, we're gonna do three single crochets and then an increase, and that's gonna be our pattern. So one, 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 and then an increase. One, 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 and then an increase, okay? That's the pattern. So we're gonna do single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, 
and an increase, okay? Then we're doing that pattern, repeating it around. So we're doing a single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, and an increase, okay? So that's your pattern. Repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay, we finished that round. We're moving our stitch marker now. Next round is nice and easy, so we're gonna go ahead and do round seven on our own here because it's just single crocheting around, okay? We're still building it up. It's not quite as big as it's gonna get, but we're almost there, so we're gonna go ahead and do one single crochet all the way around just to give it, continue giving it that shape, okay? So one single crochet in each of the prior round stitches. I'll meet you at the end. Here we go. We've finished one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. I'm going to move my stitch marker here. Okay, you'll see that it's starting to really take shape here. So let's continue on. We're going to do round eight now. And round eight is we're going to do five single crochets and then an increase around, okay? So it's not as, it's not quite the same pattern here. Um, we're just making it a little bit bigger before we start actually building him up, okay? So we're going to do five single crochets, so let's do that together. So one in the next, one in the next, one in the next, that's three, one in the next, that's four, okay, and one in the next. There's the five single crochets. Now we're doing our increase, okay, so that's two and one, right? Then we're gonna keep going with the same pattern. So five single crochets, one, there's the next one, there's three, there's four, there's five, and then an increase. Okay, I'll meet you back at the end of this round. Just gone ahead and finished that round. So now that we've done all of our increasing, we're gonna go ahead and continue to build him up a little bit more before we start to decrease. So for rounds nine through 11, okay, so that's three rounds, we're gonna do single crochet around. So we're just building up at this point. We've made all the increases that we needed to. We're just making him a little bit bigger, a little taller, okay? So we're just single crocheting around for the next three rows or three rounds, okay? So I'll meet you back at the end of round 11. Okay, I've just finished round 11, so he's been built up. Now we're gonna start with decreasing. And what I like to do is I like to do what's called an invisible decrease, okay? And that's just because on a regular decrease, it's a little bit more noticeable, so you can actually notice it a little bit more on the outside of the piece. Visible decrease is just that. It's a lot more uh, invisible, you won't see it as much. So you'll see very little in the way of where you've decreased when you do the invisible method, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so on the next round, we're gonna do five single crochets and then an invisible decrease, all right? So we're basically just decreasing what we increased on the last uh, increase round. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So let's do five single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now invisible decrease time, okay? We're gonna work in the front loops only, okay? We're leaving these back loops. So if you're looking at the V, right? If you're looking at the V of the braid, we're only working into this front loop. We are leaving this back loop without working into it, okay? Just the front loop. Okay, so we're gonna, we just have the one loop on our hook. We're gonna go down underneath that loop and come up through the center of the V, all right? You see that? Let's do that again, okay. We're gonna go up through the center of the V going from the bottom underneath the front loop and into the center between the V, okay? Now we're gonna go into the next one doing the same thing 
Okay, you're keeping those two loops now, going into the next one in the front loop. So going down from underneath into the middle of the V, all right? You see that? So now we've got the two front loops here and we have our, our loop here that we're using with our working yarn. Now we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna pull through those two loops, the front loops, okay? So you should have two loops now on your hook. Yarn over again and pull through, all right? And then you'll continue on working as you would normally, all right? Just make sure if you're looking here, make sure that you're not going into the stitch where you did your decrease, your invisible decrease, you're gonna go into the next one and do a single crochet. Okay, do continue on. So there's two, three, four, five. Okay, let's do another invisible decrease together. We're going down from underneath that loop and up through the center of the V, doing that again on the next stitch, going up underneath that loop, coming up through the center of the V. Now we've got those two front loops on our hook, yarning over from the back, pulling through those front loops, two stitches on your hook, yarn over again, and pull through, okay? So you'll notice you really don't see the decrease. Okay, it's very, just about invisible. If you're a crocheter, you might see it, or you will probably see it. Um, but it's so much nicer than the regular decrease, which actually creates almost like a little bump. So, okay, so we've done that. Now we're gonna go into the next stitch and do, again, single crochet five times. One, two, three four and five. Let's do another invisible decrease. Going underneath that loop, coming up through the center, going to the next one, under the loop, up through the center, yarning over, pull through the front loops that you just grabbed on your hook there, yarn over again and pull through the last two loops. Now going into the next one, we're doing five single crochets and the next five stitches, There's two, three, four, five. We're doing another invisible decrease underneath the loop, up through the center of the V, underneath the next loop, up through the center of the V, yarning over, pulling through those front loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. Then going on to the next stitch again, we're single crocheting the next five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you should have two more loops here, two more stitches left. Going underneath that for the one next to your hook, up through the center, going into the last one, underneath the loop, up through the center, yarn over, pull through those front loops, yarn over, pull through those last two loops, okay? And now you can replace your stitch marker on your working loop here and that's your invisible decrease. So you'll see it's starting to curl under, right? It's almost like a, um, what's that candy called? A dum-dum? No, that's the sucker. You know, the little drop candies. Are they called drops? Oh my gosh, it's probably called drops. Anyway, um, not like a little gum drop, right? Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go on to round 13. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do single crochet and then an invisible decrease all the way around. All right, so single crochet in the next, invisible decrease in the next ones here. So going underneath into the center, underneath into the center, pulling through those two front loops and pulling through those last loops. Okay, single crochet, invisible decrease, okay. single crochet, invisible decrease coming up through the center to the next up through the center, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, single crochet in the next, continuing on with our invisible decrease here. Okay, this is gonna really make it a nice sharp, sharp decrease here, okay? So up and through the center, 
up and through the center again, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, single crochet, and we're just going all the way around with that same pattern. And a lot of times on patterns, what they'll do is they'll say it one time, right? They'll put it in parentheses, they'll say single crochet, comma, invisible decrease. And those will be in parentheses, and then after that it'll say times 10, right? You're supposed to do that same pattern in the parentheses 10 times. That's what that means. And then it should give you a stitch count at the end. So when in doubt, you can always count your stitches at the end and make sure that you have ended up with the same amount that the designer of the pattern had ended up with. And sometimes, on occasion, you'll find one that's not quite right, and that's, anybody makes mistakes, right? So it's always frustrating when that happens, though. You want a pattern that's made well and has already been tested and whatnot, but do your best. It's just math, right? If you decrease 10 times, it means that your end row, the end of the row, is going to have 10 stitches less than the prior round. If you're increasing 10, it's going to have 10 stitches more than the prior round, right? Just math. Okay, so now we're replacing our stitch marker on our working loop. Okay, you see how it's really started to curve in? The next thing we're going to do, and we're going to learn a new stitch, well, it's not really a new stitch, close though. We're going to be working in the back loops only. You'll see on this little guy, if I can actually point it out here, you'll see there's a little bit of a ridge. Do you see that? Okay, what that is, is that because I've worked in the back loops, so remember when we're doing our invisible decrease, we're working in the front loops. We're now gonna work into the back loop. So it's the same thing, but instead we're gonna work on the back part of the V, not the front. And by doing that, we're leaving the front unworked and it's creating that nice little ridge which just helps him to stand up a little bit better. It gives him a little more definition, right? So the pattern for doing the next round in the back loops only is going to be three single crochets and an invisible decrease in the back loops only, okay? I'm just repeating that because I want to make sure we all understand we're all on the same page. All right, so looking at the top, we see our V here. We see our braid, okay? We're working into the back loop which is the one on the inward most part, right, where this gap is. We're gonna go in just to that one. So now we're going in through the center of the V, coming out on the back. We're gonna go ahead and yarn over, pull a loop forward, yarn over, and pull through like our normal single crochets. But again, we're only working into this back loop here, going into the center of the V to the back, or the inside of your piece, rather and then creating that single crochet. We're going into the center of the V, into this inside area of your Ami, yarning over, pulling forward, yarning over, pulling through, okay? And you'll see that if you're doing it right, you're leaving that one loop unworked, okay? And that's creating that nice little line there, the nice little ridge there for you. Okay, the next thing we're doing is an invisible decrease in the back loops only, okay? So rather than working in the front loops only for the invisible decrease as we would normally, we're gonna go into the back loops. So we're going in through the center of the V to the inside of our Ami, going into the next one. Okay, yarning over, pulling through those back loops here, yarning over and pulling through. Okay, we're doing now Again, single crochets in the back loops only, just for another three. So one, two, and three. And you'll find in a lot of these patterns when they do this and they leave that ridge, sometimes they'll actually work into it to create something else. So it could be like a little bit of a wavy um, ridge that goes around, something like that, but they'll actually utilize that that stitch that they, or that front loop that they've left behind. So you will see that sometimes in patterns, not in this one, but um, in other ones, you'll see that. Okay, we've done our three single crochets. Now we're gonna do another invisible decrease in the back loops only. So we're going in through the center to the back, then going into the next one, center into the back, yarning over, pulling through those back loops, 
yarning over, pulling through, okay? Now we're doing three single crochets in the back loops again. We're just going all the way around, leaving that front loop unworked. We're replacing our stitch marker. So we can start the next one. But before we do that, you'll see that your hole is now getting pretty small, okay? This is perfect size. Your fingers can get in there to do the safety eyes. But if you do another round, you're not going to be able to. So what does that mean? That means we need to start making the face, okay? We want to make sure that we do all the face details before we stuff and before we close this off. All right, so you're going to need your safety eyes. Again, I'm using five millimeter safety eyes. You can use whatever you have. I would say more common is six millimeter. So if you've got that, that's the one, that's the size that I used on the B here, the B present. For that pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and link that one down below. If you're looking where your ridge is and you count up from that ridge, okay, let's count some rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the I is going to be between the sixth and the seventh row from that ridge that we just made. So this will be in the back. So we're going to go up this way. So counting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I want to go ahead and put one safety eye in first. And you're putting it into one of these little, little spaces between your stitches, okay? Wiggle it in. All right, there's one. We haven't put the back on yet, but we're gonna go ahead and place the other one before we do that, okay? Now, you can count the stitches too. If you'll notice, there's almost like a little U shape that's between each one. So you can count from that. So one, two, three, four, and five. There's about five stitches in between these eyes. So I'm gonna do that for this one. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna go right in here, okay? Whoops, I lost my eye. <laughs> here we go. All right, oh my goodness, this one does not wanna go in. At least I've made a little marker there. There we go. Oh my goodness, you're not cooperating. Okay, so, oops, my goodness, this guy's just jumping all over the place. All right, so that's where my eyes are. You can see they're about the same as the other one. So it, you can have them farther apart, you know, I'm closer together. This is how you can create the personality for your little character, right? So you want to just make him unique however you'd like. With a safety eye, generally speaking, you'll notice that it will have a bump side and a flat side. So what you'd want to do is you would want to put the flat side down onto the safety eye. So I'm going to pull this out so you can kind of see what I mean. All right. Normally the flat side would be towards the work. Now these ones are a little weird um, and I found that they stay better if I actually go the other direction and I have the flat side out. So with these ones, I'm gonna do my flat side out, but for you, most of the time, and I can show you real quick what I mean, you'll see that it'll be bumped out on one side. Do you see that? Can you guys see that? Okay, it's bumped out on that side and it's flat on that side. So in that case, I would have the safety eye backing going this direction, right? If the eye was here. I just want you guys to see what I'm talking about. All right, so see how the flat side would go towards the safety eye, and then obviously your yarn would be in between. So the bump side would be towards the inside of your work, okay? That's usually how the backings look. These ones are a little funky. They work, but they're a little funky. Okay, so I'm gonna do the flat side out because it seems to lock it in place better. All right, now you're gonna hear the popping sound. One. Two. I try to get three, although these ones are pretty small, so 
I tend to get two on these ones, but the six millimeter eyes, I can usually get a three popper in there. All right, so I'm gonna do the flat side out on mine. You do your flat side down, okay? One, there's one, there's two, okay. There we go. Now they're not going anywhere. Nice and secure. Next part we need to do is we're gonna grab our embroidery thread and our embroidery needle, not the end. So to knot the ends, what I like to do is grab the little end of your thread, spin it around your finger and kind of meet it together where it would meet the other end. And I spin it by pulling my finger out. See that? And then I just grab that little knotty bit there that it's creating and I pull and that always creates a little knot. That's just how I do mine. However you want to do yours, just make sure it's big enough that it's not going to pop through. And then the other thing you do so it doesn't pop through is that you're going to split the yarn stitches. So rather than coming out from one of these in between spaces, which is too big for this, this knot, it's just going to pop right out. I'm going to go in between the fibers of the yarn and that will keep it secure on the inside of my piece. All right, so we're going into that hole. We're going to come up close to the eye, but giving it a little bit of a space there, okay? So this is actually right about in the center, right between the eyes, but I'm, again, making sure that I'm splitting the stitch instead of going into the gaps in between, and that's going to make it so my knot doesn't come out. Now I'm going to go into the other side next to the other eye, and I want to try to make it about as equal distance as I can, and I'm also going to make it go straight across. So now I'm coming back out through that hole in the bottom and pull, okay? Now you could keep him like that, or you can make him have a little bit of a smile, right? So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do the smile. Again, you can keep him a little snarky face like that if you want, or you can make him happy. And what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna go down underneath this line a little bit, okay? So let's go underneath the line first, come up, okay? Now you're gonna go around this thread here, okay? You're gonna go around, make sure you don't split the thread. You wanna go around and go into the same stitch that you're coming out of, all right? So you're basically, if this is the stitch, you're going around it, okay? And that, what that's doing is it's going to pull the stitch down so you can give it some shape. All right, so watch. So it tucks it down a little bit, okay? So now I've got one side, I'm gonna do the same on the other side and pull the other side down just a little bit, okay? So I'm coming up underneath, underneath, and in this one, I'm going to the left a little bit, and the other one I went to the right a little bit, right? So that it's more U-shaped. Okay, so I'm gonna come up. Now I'm gonna go around again and go back into that same state space that I'm coming out of, and then come back through that center gap hole there, Boop. all right, and pull down, and there you have it, see that? See, now it's curved, all right? You can do little cheek marks if you want. You could do a little cheek mark. In fact, I'll do one so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, just like I did on my B, I'm gonna go up, sort of up and straight away from the smile there. And then I'm gonna just come down. So it's kinda like he's doing like a half smile, right? With one cheek bumped out. <laughs> All right, oops. And pull, like a little straight stitch. There we go. So there you go. So see, that gives him a little sideways smile, just like I did on my little bee. Okay, except for his smile's a little bigger. This one I did not do that, I just did the little U. Okay, you could do one on the other side if you wanted. 
Um, this is really where you can have some fun. You can make it have some eyelashes if you want. One thing I did on this one is I did a couple little markings. It's hard to see on this guy because he's a darker color, but you would be able to see it on this lighter green. So I'll do that so you can see. But I just basically made almost kind of like markings, if you will. Um, it's not quite an eyelash because it doesn't actually touch the eye. Try to make sure you don't do this. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, it's not working with me here. There we go. Okay. So see, you could go in and just try to get just under the eye and create an eyelash, right? You could do that. Or you can go out and just create like a little face mar marking, almost like a whisker. So I'm going to do that. One. And two, and now I'm going to go to the other side and do the same. So you can you can either tie these off and then make another knot and go to the other side, or you can just go to the other side. But if you do just go to the other side, you want to make sure not to pull too tightly because it'll make your your little guy squish in on the sides if you're not careful. Okay, so there's the two on that side. So again, I'm not pulling it too tight just tight enough so that I can get over to the other side and then I'm going to go ahead and make my two little markings of surprise here. One and coming back down through that center and two. So see he's got his little markings and I'm going to go ahead and tie this off now because we finished the little detail work so bring bring the inside out just a little bit. You're going to grab a few strands of the yarn, so just splitting some of the threads there. Before you go pulling all the way through, you're going to put your needle through that loop and then pull. In essence, you're just tying knots, right? I'm going to go around that same area and do it again. You can do that two to three times. You're just making sure that the knot is nice and secure. Then you're going to cut it away and you're done with the embroidery of your little piece. All right, so now what I would suggest is to start stuffing him. Okay, so you're just stuffing the inside, making sure to go around the safety eyes so you don't get any uh, sharp angles or anything. You want it to look nice and soft and get him nice and stuffed in there. You don't have to fully stuff him. We'll have one more chance to stuff the little end there, but you just wanna get the bulk of him stuffed now, okay? All right, look, he's so cute. Okay, let's do the next round, shall we? Let's grab our hook. Okay, we're gonna continue to close this hole. We're gonna do two single crochets and an invisible decrease around. So we're going into both loops like we've done in the past. Single crochet, single crochet in the next, and then invisible decrease. So in the front loops only, going through the next two, yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. Place your stitch marker and now you're going to want to finish stuffing your little guy okay so once you've gotten him the plumpness that you want maybe a little give but not so much give that it actually dents him in if you squish him right okay and then once you're done with your stuffing we'll finish off and we'll bind this off so that he's one whole piece and then we can work on the other details Meet you back at the end of the stuffing portion. Okay, so he's nice and stuffed, and we're gonna go ahead and finish him off here. Get your hook in, and now what the next round is gonna be, we're gonna do one single crochet and then an invisible decrease and do that same pattern around. So, single crochet into the next, invisible decrease in the next two here, so we're tying those two together. 
You can take out your stitch marker now. Now to finish off and bind, or bind off, you're going to go into the next, like you'll do a single crochet, but instead you're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, and then just pull through that last loop so you only end up with one on your hook. Okay. Now you're going to cut the yarn away, giving yourself enough of a tail so that you can weave this through the ending stitches so you can close this hole. Okay. So pull your loop out, grab that end tail, and then pull tight. Okay. So this has finished it off, but now we need to weave in the ends and this is going to close our hole there. So get your yarn needle, thread your yarn needle, and you're going to now, going around, we're weaving through these stitches. We're going to only weave through these front loops only, okay? You don't weave through the back loops. So you're going to go under the front loop, through the center, then from the center back to the outside of your next stitch, okay? Don't pull tight, just gently pull for now. Now go into the next one, going from the outside to the center of the V, then on the next stitch going from the center of the V to the outside. So we're weaving, right? We're weaving through these front loops, okay? Being gentle about it, we're not fully closing it yet, okay? Going from the outside to the inside, inside to the outside, these next two, gently gently pull going to the next one outside to the center center to the outside gently pull okay and you'll see that you won't see any more front loops so you know you've come to the end now you're just going to gently pull and you'll see that that gap has closed you see that all right so now what I like to do is go into my piece out somewhere else Okay, should look nice and tight in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and tie this off. So I'm gonna grab an entire piece of yarn. Okay, don't split it. You want that whole piece or this isn't gonna work. Okay, so going, making sure you've got this whole piece of yarn, whichever one you're grabbing. Okay, you can wiggle it too and just make sure. Start to pull. Before you pull that full loop through, go through it with your needle. Okay and you're tying a knot. So now you see the knot is on top. Lift it up so you can see where the gap is underneath. You're gonna go into that gap, come out somewhere else, and then you're gonna gently pull and you'll see that that knot is tucking in. Okay, it tucks into the inside of the piece. And now he is, the outside of him is done anyways. We're gonna do his legs and then his little spine and then we'll attach them together. Okay, so I'm cutting this away. I'm putting my needle in somewhere else and I'm just wiggling it and that's gonna pop that end into our inside of our piece. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is the same color for his feet, okay? So grab your yarn again. All right, I've got my yarn, I've got my hook. Now for the feet, we're gonna make two of them. They're both the same. So we're gonna make a double magic ring to start. We're gonna do six single crochets into the double magic ring. So I've got my working yarn held between my back two fingers, making my pistol shape here. Going from the back once, twice, three times, and holding the tail with my thumb. Going from the top, I'm going under these first two, up over the third, and I'm pulling the third forward, making my A. Now I'm grabbing these, these threads on the outside to hold my loops here while I've got my working yarn still in the back. I'm going to yarn over. I'm just going to hold it from the base so that it doesn't pull through, it doesn't pull out, okay? And I'm going to pull my hook through. Now I've done my little slip stitch around the outside that's holding it for me. Now I can go into the center and do some single crochets, okay? So we're doing six of them. Going into the center, yarn over, pull forward, yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, 
gently start pulling the tail, see which one's going in, grab that one, pull that one first, nice and tight, grab the tail, pull that, whoops, pull that nice and tight. All right, and there's your double magic ring with six single crochets into the double magic ring. All right, let's place our stitch marker. Now we're going to just start building it up because it's already the size we want. We just want it to be tall, right? We, this is the front of the foot and now we're gonna build the leg. So we're working in to the back loops only. We're leaving the front unworked so that we keep a little ridge in the front. Okay, I'm just gonna tuck the tail to the back this time. So I'm going th through the center of the V to the back, yarning over, pulling forward, yarning over, pulling through, single crochet, okay, doing the next, through the center of the V to the back, yarn over, pull forward, and do that all the way around. So that's gonna be six single crochets in the back loops only. Now for the last round, we're just doing single crochet around. So we're still maintaining that six single crochet stitch count. I'm just gonna cut this tail off so it's not in my way. And I'm gonna just do six single crochets around. Now I'm working into both sides of the prior round stitches so that whole V is getting used. Now take out your stitch marker, slip stitch in the next one because we're fastening off. So we're going into the whole V here Yarning over, pull through, and just pull through that last loop. Okay, clip it away, leaving a tail long enough to stitch him down, stitch his little leg down to him. Okay, so we just threw that end through the loop and pulled tight, and that's fastening it off. Now these you'll be able to gently stuff a little tiny bit, um, just to give them a little bit more stability. Um, but this one is done, so you're going to go ahead and make another one. Just if you need to, you can back up the video and just follow again. But six single crochets in a magic ring, single crochet in the back loops only for the next round, and then single crochet in the last round. Okay, so go ahead and make the last leg, and I will meet you back at the end of that, and we'll go ahead and make his spine, and then we'll start assembling. our little feet we're going to set those aside now we're grabbing our contrasting color here and we're going to go ahead and make his little spine okay so we're going to learn how to do a chain what you want to do is give yourself a bit of a tail here okay you're going to wrap it around your fingers once so you see those your loop right there now this end tail I'm going to tuck it in between that center loop or that circle that's going around my fingers, you see? I'm grabbing it, taking my fingers out, okay, see that? Now grab this tail and gently pull, okay? And this is a slip knot, so you'll see that it's you can still slip it, right? That's why it's a slip knot. It's a knot that you can still pull this through, but you don't wanna pull it all the way through or you're untying it, so. We just made a slip knot. We put our hook on there, and then now we can continue chaining on because this has tied this end off. It won't unravel from that side now with our slip knot on there. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna chain 12, okay? Chains are nice and easy. So hold on to this tail here with your thumb and your pointer finger. You've got your back fingers here holding your tension. Yarn over. Pinch this little knot here so that it gives you some stability and just pull through, okay? That's one chain. Yarn over and pull through. That's a second chain. Yarn over, pull through, three. Yarn over, pull through, four. Yarn over, pull through, five. And keep going, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12. Okay, there's our little 12 chains. I'm gonna move these over here. Now I always like to take it from the center top and just kind of bring it down, make sure that it's gonna cover the back part of him for the most part. Okay, and it does, so it's looking good. Next up, we need to start working into the chain. So you tend to work in the second chain from the hook. So what that means is that here's my hook. You'll see the same V braid, right? It's just making that same V braid as before. Um, and then you don't wanna go into this first one, the first V, you leave that one unworked. So you're going into the second one from the hook, okay? And what you're gonna do is go in through the center of the V to the back, okay? Grab your working yarn here. Yarn over, pull forward. Now you have two on your hook. Yarn over and pull through, okay? So, so far we've done a single crochet into the second loop from the hook, all right? I'm gonna do that again just to show you one more time. All right, so I, I'm adjusting here. I'm not using this first V. I'm going into the second chain from my hook going into the center of the V to the back, yarn over, pull forward a loop, yarn over, and pull through. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I wanna create these pointies, right? These little spikes. And what those are called are called picos, okay? Like little peaks. So we're, I'm gonna teach you how to do a pico stitch. But we've got one single crochet so far, now, we're gonna chain two, okay? So yarn over, pull through, there's one. Yarn over and pull through, there's a second one. Now going into the second chain from your hook, you're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going into the center of the V to the back, yarn over, pull forward. Now you've got two in your hook. Just take that second one there and pull through the first one, okay? That's doing a slip stitch. All right, now, okay, you're going into that same single crochet space, so we're not going down the chain yet, we're still on the same one, and we're gonna do another single crochet. Okay, now do you see? You've created your first little peak. That's your first pico right there. Now we're gonna continue on the original chain going into the next stitch we're gonna do a slip stitch. So we're going in from the center of the V to the back, yarn over, pull forward, and then just pull through that loop that's on your hook. So that's really creating a nice deep V shape, okay? Now we're gonna go into the next chain. We're gonna go in through the center of the back and we're gonna do another pico. So we're starting with a single crochet. Now we're gonna chain two, one, two, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Okay, now going into the same stitch, we're doing another single crochet. All right, and then we're gonna go into the next stitch on our chain here and slip stitch to lock in that little peak that we've just made. So you see we've made two peaks, one and two. And we're keeping going with the same pattern here as we go all the way to the end of this chain. So we're gonna go into the next one, and do a pico. So single crochet, chain two, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook to create your peak. Then single crochet into the same chain space from the original chain, okay? Now we're going into the next chain in through the center of the V, and we're just doing a slip stitch, okay? And you'll see it does start to curl a little bit, and that's okay, don't worry about that. Going into the next one, we're doing another pico, so single crochet, chain two, slip stitch in the second chain from hook, and single crochet again into the same original chain Going into the next stitch, we're gonna do a slip stitch to give it that nice deep V. And then we're gonna go into the next stitch and do another pico. So single crochet, chain two, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. 
single crochet into that same space and then slip stitch into the la the next one okay and you should have one more on your hook and you're just going to go ahead and do one more slip stitch okay now cut it away but leave a tail because we're going to stitch it down to the top of our dinosaur here all right and then start pulling this and grab the one that starts pulling in and then tie it off okay so you'll see you've got your little starting to curl but that's okay because it's going on his back and he's curled right so it'll just lay on his back nicely okay so that's going to be his little spines now you can go either way you'll see if you put where you did those ending slip stitches if you put that towards the front then his spines go towards the back if you go the other direction his spines go almost like mohawk style right almost towards the front so it's really up to you which way you want to have it go so this one I did the mohawk style right so my two slip stitches which were here I had those towards the bottom and then I had it kind of coming towards his face right but you can go either direction with it so you have one tail that was your original tail so that one you can just weave in so you're just getting your yarn needle and you're just going to weave it in okay so to do that you're going to go into the center between the yarn so that you're going working this tail into the center so what you'll see is that on the front you don't see the hook on the back you don't see the hook okay so you're not you're not going on the outside of the piece you're going in between the stitches and that's just going to hide this tail in there okay okay good all right that's probably good now i'm going to go ahead and clip this little end tail away here all right you can stretch it a little bit and that'll tuck that end in now we're going to thread our yarn needle again with the other side making sure you get every bit of it okay perfect now there's a couple things you can do here to keep it straight one you just keep looking front to back okay so if i look at the front like okay i want that to stay there so then i'm going to guide it looking where the eyes are you want to make sure it goes to the back okay so double check and then you can start stitching into here okay that's one way another way is to get little pins like little sewing pins and just have those hold it in place for you so that you don't have to worry about it becoming a wonky spike right you don't want it to kind of be all wiggling all over the place unless you do i mean that's its own style i suppose so again i'm looking at the front of the eyes making sure that it is centered taking my pins grabbing the blue yarn and then just poking it into the head and this is just holding it in place for me so that it I can work my way up and it don't have to worry about it coming out or being a wonky line right so this one's got to come over a little bit there we go looking pretty good uh, I think it's actually over a little bit more okay centered all right and then do this last one here Make sure that that's how you want it. You could have it come forward more if you want to have it come on the top of him more, but I like this. I think this looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it down. All right, so I'm down at the bottom here. I'm gonna come up, I'm going into my head piece, coming up just this, the row right in front okay come on here we go all right so now one end is tied down 
Now you can take the first one out. And what you're doing is your original chain, when you worked in through that center V, it left the other side not worked, right? Just like what we did over here. So we have that same kind of ridge. So we're gonna use that ridge to our advantage here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the ridge, going back into the same space as before, and then jumping up on the line here. And it doesn't have to be every single row, maybe every couple rows here, just enough to really tack the spikes down. But you gotta make sure you grab the spikes to do so. Okay, so I tacked the next area down. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. So see, I'm going into this, you see that ridge right there? So I'm going from the top of the ridge down towards my piece, going back into my piece in the same spot, and coming out a couple rows and then pulling, okay? Making sure that it doesn't get tied around the spike. So see how this is fastened now, All right? We've come to the next pin. I think I could do one more stitch and then I'll pull that guy out. I'm going around that original chain here that was left behind, coming out. I'm going to grab him. I'm going to the very front of the original magic ring. Grab the furthest part here. I'm going to grab that spine and I'm going to pull it down to this front zone here. Okay. Is it straight? It looks pretty good to me. Double check. Okay. Now you can if you're happy with how it is and it's tacked down nicely, then all you have to do is tie it off. So let's do that now. Okay, we've got the front tacked down. Everybody's on, it's not going anywhere. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to come up next to the same color a stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, back down my spikes here I'm coming back to where I made one of the stitches to tack the spikes down. All right. And now to tie off, I'm going to grab one of those stitches that I used to tie the spikes down because it's in the same color that I'm using. You don't want to do it in the lighter color or the body color because when you try to hide your knot, it's not going to hide very well. So I've got this, I've picked up a stitch here, pulling it through, but not all the way. Grab that loop, put your needle through, and now tighten it. Tying a knot, lift it up, find where that gap is underneath, go into the gap, come out somewhere else on your piece, and then gently, I have to wiggle it a little bit, pull and pop the knot into your piece. And I'll clip it away. And put your needle in and just wiggle it near where that end is and it'll tuck it in for you. Okay, now last part we need to do is his little feet. So if you, ha if you want, you can do a little bit of stuffing in those. So I'm gonna do that. yarn needle one last time or second to last time since he's got two feet okay now you want to get him how you want him upright and you're gonna put his little feet to the sides where you're gonna want them all right wherever that might be so you could have them more forward like two little hands almost or you can have them you can have them all the way to the sides, although I think it's nice to have them somewhat to the front just because it helps him to stand more. And you could use your pins again just to keep them where you want them because that's the tough part is making it stay for you and be cooperative. 
Alright, let's see. Squish him down. Decide where I want his foot. And I'm just going to pin it for now. And I want to make sure I keep my little braid here. So I'm going to pin it up a little higher. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side, making sure that they're even. And I'm going to pin it again. All right, now. You can kind of double check, is that how you want it? Squish him down, make sure his feet are touching the ground. That looks good. See, he's gonna be a little bit bigger. <laughs> so funny, they're all a little bit unique in their own ways, right? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching down. So we're whip stitching to connect these pieces. So right now I'm connected to this foot. I'm gonna go in where it's going to attach to his head. Okay, now if you can imagine, we're stitching around a circle, right? So I need to come up on the row above and slightly to the left, we're building the circle around to whip stitch. All right, so now I'm connected. Now you're going in underneath the braid, the whole braid. Okay, so you can go under the whole V, going back into that same space where your thread is coming out, your yarn is coming out, and then just go next door and pull. Next one, go back into the same stitch you're coming out of, coming into the next over next to it, okay? That end row on our foot, we're tacking that down, okay? So now I'm coming over and then curving again because I'm going around the circle. You can take your pins out because this little foot's not going anywhere. See, now I can show you. This is the braid. Now we're going to go into the next one underneath, coming back into the stitch we're coming out of. I'm going to come up next to the ridge we left behind. Okay, and I'm going to grab the next one and come over a little bit. And then I'm going to do one final one. Now I'm going to come back out on where I did one of those tacking stitches. Okay, because I need to fasten off. So I'm gonna pick up the stitch that I did to connect, go through the loop, and pull. Now I've made a knot, I'm lifting it up, I'm looking underneath for that hole or the little gap underneath the knot, coming out somewhere else, and pull tight enough to pop that knot in. Okay, so look, there's his little foot. He's got one, now we just gotta tack down the other one. So let's cut this away. We're almost done, you guys. You're almost done with your first Ami Groomy. This is so exciting. Ah, oh, I love Amis. They're so fun. This would be a great gift for any little guy that likes dinosaurs, even dragons. He looks a little like a dragon, except for he doesn't have the wings, so. That's why I call him a dinosaur. Okay. He just needs his other little foot here. So we're doing the same thing as before, going into the head, coming out the next row and slightly to the left. Okay, picking up that top most V, going back in the same stitch, going over to the next. Okay, grabbing another V. Going now to the next. Now we're going to start curving our circle. Grab another V. Going down towards that original ridge. Okay. Just keep going around. We are attaching pieces together. So look, we've learned. What have we learned today? We've learned a double magic ring, a single crochet, invisible decrease working in the back loops only, working in the front loops only. We've learned how to do a pico, a chain. We've learned how to stitch pieces together. And we've learned how to do some basic embroidery on the front of the face and how to do safety eyes. All of that in one video, see? Why make a ball when you can make a little dinosaur, am I right? Here we go, so I'm coming, now I've finished going around 
I'm going to take these pins out because I don't need them anymore. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and grab one of the front stitches here that I took to tack this guy down. Take his little foot down. Go through the loop. Tie my knot. Lift it up. And come out somewhere else. Tuck that little knot in. Okay. Now I'm going to just cut this away and wiggle underneath to pull that in. Your first little Amigurumi. Look at him. He's so cute. This is just a much more fun way, I think, to learn how to crochet Amigurumis. It's a little different than your traditional crochet. You get to make a little plushie out of it. But what a cute little gift. You can make a little keychain out of it for a backpack. You could just keep him as a little desk pet, but either way, you finished your very first Amigurumi. I'm so proud of you. All right, you guys, happy crocheting. Bye.